Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank the board for the opportunity to share the research update with you today. One of the other things that uh, BLM has examined in the last year is a proposal and to test the safety of spaying wild horse mares by a vaginal approach called potomy. Um, some work has been done using this approach on the Sheldon uh, Wildlife Refuge as well as in some private herds in, in California. Just some comments here. I had a conversation with Sheldon Wildlife Refuge Director Paul Stebline during the Sheldon Roundup in September 2010. He confirmed to me the following that they did experimental hysterectomies on these wild horses unprotected by any laws and called feral because they are managed by Fish and Wildlife Service and not on BLM land. Although Dr. Kane stated the Sheldon horses hysterectomies were through a vaginal approach, Paul Stebline confirmed to me that the hysterectomies were through the anus, that they had a 10% mortality rate until they perfected the procedure and that they do the procedure in the pens and turn the mares out as soon as possible, often within two days, to minimize stress and potential for disease when with multiple animals. Of course, this precludes them from administering post-operative antibiotics. In truth, the researchers have no idea how well or poorly the mares are doing, or whether they are falling prey to the numerous potentially fatal complications inherent in this invasive experimental procedure performed in less than pristine circumstances. Um, so far they've only done short-term post-operative monitoring in these cases. Uh, they want to examine the safety of the procedure during the early, mid, and late stages of gestation. How are they going to open up pregnant horses to do that? Please pardon my ignorance, but it's not clear whose safety we're talking about. Well, they have received IACUC approval from the University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, there are no provisions in the study to examine the efficacy of this procedure uh, for controlling population growth rates. Uh, BLM management intends to pursue the project, but no determination has been made yet on how, when, or where. Um, it seems to me that um, in order to go forward with something like this type of study, wouldn't you need some kind of uh, provision to examine population growth? I mean, that's the whole reason why we would be mm -hmm. looking at that. So I would think that that would, should be an integral part of the well, it's kind of, it, it, to some extent, you have to take it one step at a time. In other words, the first thing we need to do is examine the safety of the procedure in a more controlled setting. Um, of wild horses or domestic horses? Wild horses is the plan. And then, um, and then ultimately, you would, you would go out into the field and start to look at population growth rates. But it's really, the first hurdle, I think, is to see how well it's going to work on a cross-section of mares as they would come in on a typical gather. And, and then down the road, if, if that looks good down the road, then you might take it to the field and do some more population level follow-up. Um, it's hard to do the kind of follow-up we want to see for the safety studies on a free roaming herd because you can't follow up. We might run this soon as you know, if we have immunity against GNRH in the animals they won't be coming into, into estrus. Whereas with PZP, that, the estrus still is good. Um, that is the thought, <coughs> and that theoretically that's true. I think you have to remember that, that you know, mares cycle with, um, with different amounts of, of uh, vigor, and, and some mares will cycle even though they don't show it, and some mares will show a little bit of estrus behavior when they're not cycling. So I think part of the part of what the jury is still out on includes their behavioral work, which will help address that. Um, in theory, you're correct; they shouldn't cycle, um, which would, to me, would be a would be a good thing. I mean, you know, uh. if if that fact pans out, uh, I think I think either way can be a workable scenario. I think there's pros and cons to cycling, and there's pros and cons to not something. Um, 
And I don't know, you know, the, the behavioral work that we've done so far has not identified, you know, strong negative influences of PZP22 with regard to behavioral influences. And those mares continue to cycle. Um, now, what having mares stop cycling might do behaviorally, I don't know yet. You know, um, so I think every time you think there's something like that, that, well, clearly this would be better, well, would it or wouldn't it be necessarily? I mean, you, you want some of that, you, want, you, know, you want to still preserve some of that behavior. Um, is it going to affect group size? Is it going to affect band size? That's but again, I think the jury's out, and I look forward to early winter when you know, the results will start coming in from that other project. That's a, uh, for those of you that don't know, that's a project being done by the National Park Service in Teddy Roosevelt National Park in the Theodore Roosevelt National Park in uh, North Dakota. Thank you. And USGS is helping with that a little bit. They helped them set up some of the behavioral monitoring. Uh, Colorado State University is involved. Yes, sir. Is, is that is the behavioral, the herd behavioral patterns, is that, is that what's holding up to, to just a flat out state of there? Um, no, not necessarily. I think some of it's the practicality of, of trying to do that procedure on a large scale. Um, it's not, it's nothing like spaying a heifer, you know, and, and, and cattle can be spayed very easily. Um, it's, it's, it's a little more, well, it's a lot more complicated. And the potential for, for side effects and complications is much greater. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the practicality of doing it on a large scale, particularly in the field. Um, the potential effects on, on herd behavior or individual mare behavior are an issue or are, you know, something you have to think about. Yeah, it's it's the right on mares. It's it's not really a matter of developing it. I mean, the surgery's been done for years. Um, it's never been done on large scale. It's never been done in wild horses on a large scale. Um, there are several surgical approaches uh, using either you know sedation and, and keeping the mare standing or inducing uh, anesthesia and laying the mare down. Um, they all have their pros and cons. Um, None of them are, for example, as simple as castrating the sky. Uh, it's just a more complicated procedure. So it's been done standing, it's been done with mares anesthetized and recumbent, either through midline or flank approaches. Um, it's been done by lipotomy, it's done by laparoscopy. Um, probably the, the more exciting thing nowadays is this natural orifice, fiber optic guided approach. Um, which has been done in other species, but I'm not sure it's been done in horses. Um, so that's something I think might be on the horizon. Running out of time? <laughs>